Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Commander Radix here bringing you another video. And uh, today, uh, I want to do a little bit of talking about marketing. Marketing makes the world go round. It's what makes corporations go round. It's what makes art go round, if you think about it. Because if you want to do art, if you want to be an artist uh, in any form of me, I'm not talking about strictly like drawing or stuff, I'm talking about things like being a novelist, being a musician, being a YouTuber to some degree. Um, anything that is, you know, expressing something is, in a way, art. Um, and you want people to see your art. That's kind of the point of doing art, because if it's not for people to see it, then you could just keep it up in your head, right? Um, although I could see... I could see art being done as like a challenge to yourself to see if you could do it and then you do it like, oh, that's nice, I enjoy that, I can see that. But I want to talk about, you know, being a successful artist and really to do that, you gotta have really good marketing. Because marketing is ultimately what's going to get people to look at your art, um, what's going to bring your audience to you, because most people you know, don't want to, whenever they see any little bit of information, they're not going to dive deep into everything and figure out what's behind everything. You know, you have so much going on in your life that you can only really spend enough time figuring out what you like by, you know, flashy images. Now, I'm going to particularly talk about it in the context of YouTube right now. Um, for me, uh, my art is like a lot of my personal stuff, a lot of my podcasts, a lot of my uh, just random commentary videos. But I understand that not many people want to see that. So that's the art. I have to have a marketable gimmick to get people to come to see my art, you know, to increase the likelihood of people seeing that. Think of how many, like, music artists you like only because you heard their song in an anime before and really liked it. Um, and then, you know, you found them out through the anime. For example, comics. How many comic writers have you read their, like, third-party stuff uh, just because you really liked a Batman run they did, or f for example. For me personally, I do Transformers content, Transformers lore, Transformers commentary videos like this one, because more people can see that and recognize what it is, and if they like it, they'll come. Uh, frankly, it doesn't really even matter how much effort's being put into it. But by having that marketing, I can get people subscribed to the channel and like get people, get more people notified when I upload non-Transformers stuff, which is the reason I do YouTube. And on an even smaller level, the most crucial part of that marketing is the title and the thumbnail. There literally is no other metric to determine if someone will click a video or not than the title or thumbnail, and sometimes the timeliness or the relevancy of the subject. Comics have a very similar concept. They don't have thumbnails, but they do have something that people see before actually reading the book, and that is the comic cover. I've already done one analysis of a Transformer of two Transformers comic book covers. Uh, link will be in the description for that, um, where I an analyze how like these different comic covers really portray a lot about Megatron and Optimus Prime's characters. That was an example of marketing on comic book covers done right. And uh, today we're going to be looking at an example of marketing on comic book covers done done wrong. And we're doing that through. Transformers number 18. Cover A, I believe it is. Now, first thing I want to say is the art is great. I know this artist. I believe her name's Corallis or something like that. I was following her on Tumblr years ago. I was following Corallis on Tumblr a long time ago. And I'm glad to see that she's uh, now doing official Transformers work on a f something that, you know, she posted fan art for a long time. We're not here to criticize the art here. The art's fantastic. We're here to criticize this on a marketing perspective. I want you to take a look at this comic cover and tell me what do you think is wrong with it. Looking at it, would you say if you were a Transformers fan and you saw this cover, would you feel motivated to buy it? Or in contrast, would you be more willing to buy something like this? Uh, Transformers number 20 from the IDW era, which is like a photo of 
you know, a photo, a picture of Galvatron front and center, you know, all focus on him and Galvatron being a very recognizable character. And frankly, a new design that most people are used to him being in, although this was his design in IDW for a few years, but you know, in a fancy new design. Or take Transformers number 15 of the current IDW run with Megatron front and center with Soundwave and Shockwave, two very recognizable fan favorite characters on top of this wonderful imagery of a Decepticon symbol. You know, if you were walking into a comic book store and you're like, oh, I have $3.99 to spend on a on a comic book, which, whew, would you be willing to buy something like number 15 here, number 20 here, or number 18 here? I know someone's going to say, you wouldn't get number 18 because you hate women, Radix. No. For one, I can't necessarily really tell these characters are female. But that's not really my point here. The point here is, with marketing, with the cover, you're trying to grab people who might not know uh, what's going on inside the book itself. Uh, that's why thumbnails exist on YouTube. It's marketing, you know. There's an art to it, but marketing takes up front and center. You want to be able to do whatever you want to do within the comic book. What matters is if you're dragging people to the comic book with great cover art. And the art here is great, but I'm, but I mean like the market value, the marketability value, I should say. Because if you have not read the Transformers comics, but you are a Transformers fan, I want you to tell me who those two characters are. Who are these two characters in the upper right hand corner of the of the cover? Who are they? Well. This character is an original character that hasn't shown up before, named Gage. Well, this character is Greenlight, which... You'd be forgiven for forgetting Greenlight. Uh, also, her character design here is uh, extremely different than her original design. And again, I want to context this. That I'm not saying that the, these original characters existing is a bad thing. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying redesigns are a bad thing. I'm certainly not saying that. Um... I'm saying it from a market, from a market, uh, from a market ability standpoint, from marketing. Putting unrecognizable characters front and center isn't necessarily the best look. What about this arm reaching out and falling? Who do you think this arm is? You might be forgiven for thinking it might be a generic. This arm is just some generic's arm just falling off. After all, if it was someone important, we'd be focusing on them and not focusing on these two people who the average Transformer fan, which when you're in the st when when you're trying to grab people to buy Transformers comics, you kind of want to appeal to the Transformers fans first. And the reason being for this, at least with the market standpoint, is because Transformer fans will see something with a robot they recognize and buy it. Someone who doesn't know Transformers will look at it and think, oh, I remember Transformers, and then these characters look vaguely familiar or something and buy it. But I don't think it really matters about the non-Transformer fans here, because the non-Transformers fans will walk into a comic book store, see that, and they'll recognize the name Transformers. But even if it was major characters, uh, they might not be able to recognize those characters, so it doesn't really make a difference as to whether they would buy it or not. But for Transformer fans, they might be more willing to buy it if they see a character they like. So, non-Transformer fans, you have the same amount of possibility of them buying uh, if you have recognizable characters or not, and then uh, for not for Transformer fans, if you have recognizable characters, their chance of buying shoots up. This arm is RC. RC, who is much more recognizable to the uh, to the Transformers community. Now, I will say that this comic does illustrate something that happens in the comic, which, you know, a lot of comics these days don't show well, these days. A lot of comic covers forever have portrayed things that didn't actually happen in the comic. But the reason is, it's a marketing tactic, and you want people to buy your comics, especially in this era where comic sales are very unstable. And especially something for IDW, who aren't doing so hot profit-wise, they can't afford to be doing something like this with their covers. Uh, they need to put more recognizable characters front and center. Now, cover B for this issue. Cover B, from a marketing standpoint, is a bit better because RC is front and center. And sure, there's Greenlight, who you probably don't recognize, but uh, it doesn't really matter if you recognize her or not when RC's standing right there. That's a character people know. That's a character people love. 
And when it comes to the Transformer comics right now, they are so bad that I don't think that they can afford to be not essentially clickbaiting people into getting their books. Covers like this are significantly more impactful, uh, I would believe, in, you know, getting people to buy a comic. I, I, I've already said it, but I want to make it clear again that this art is great. It's marketing is bad. The only inkling you really get of RC existing is really people will be able to recognize RC from this small thing in the corner that most people will not, you know, that doesn't stand out to someone. Uh, then they would recognize this arm and saying, oh, that's RC. So let me know what you guys think about the comic cover, you know. Would you buy something like this if you saw this cover? From a market standpoint, I could see some people saying, oh wow, that's good art and getting it. I can see that, but there's a lot more at, at play when it comes to marketing than just the actual art itself. You've got to have marketing to have your true art, and uh, the marketing is what art stands upon. And uh, when your cover is something that I would imagine most people would ignore, uh, that's not good. Now, I'm not saying you have to put Optimus Prime, the most recognizable Transformers character, on the cover of every single issue. I think there are better options than the one we have here. So that was my review of this comic cover, which is interesting because I haven't reviewed this comic yet. And I, I'm doing issue by issue reviews of the entire Transformers comic series. So, uh, oh, I'm behind. But thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, check out my social media in the description if you have not yet. Subscribe to this channel, please, if you have not yet, uh, for more nerdy content and a lot of Transformers stuff. And yeah, have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. Huge thanks to our patrons, including this month's $10 plus patron, Josh Atkins. Check out the description for more patrons and more info about how you can receive a shout out here.